Hi, I'm Daphne Richards. Our question this week came from lots of different viewers. With the explosion of growth in gardens this spring, it seems like everyone wanted to know why is this such a great year for irises, roses, red buds, wildflowers, you name it. Everyone's plants are bigger, beefier, taller, and more beautiful than they've been in years. And as you might have guessed, the answer comes down to weather. Our plants have struggled for years with extreme heat and drought, and the occasional hard winter as well. No, the drought isn't over, but we did have a relatively brief period of glorious rainfall and mild temperatures, which gave our landscapes just the environment they needed to rebound and come roaring back to life. When times are tough, plants hunker down and conserve resources, producing less growth, smaller and fewer flowers, or even none at all, and very few if any fruit. Our good soaking rains of late summer and early fall last year continued all the way through winter, exactly when our wildflowers sprout and grow in preparation for flowering and producing the next generation of seeds. And with the lack of good conditions for the past several years, our wildflower seed bank quietly waited and slowly built up, exploding onto the scene and taking full advantage of the situation when the climate improved. In our gardens, there was a similar pattern. Plants that have struggled for years, conserving resources and hoping for the climate to improve, finally got exactly what they needed to put on a little extra growth, or a lot actually, and produce flowers too. After a relatively mild, wet and cloudy winter, we had some early spring warmth and sunshine. Often our early spring warm-ups are followed by late spring frosts or freezes which kill off newly formed growth and flower buds, but not this year. Spring arrived early and stayed, giving us one of our best floral displays in years. Among the many viewer pictures we received were these from Lance and Don Ware of the gorgeous Blue Bonnets near Park Road 4 in Burnet. They celebrate their anniversary each April by taking a trip to see the Blue Bonnets. Don said that the hills and castle remind her of Germany, where she and Lance met and married while in the military. We also received lots of beautiful iris photos, including this one, from Winter Golly, who shared it on our Facebook page, along with a photo of her Judy Garland rose. This beautiful red bud photo comes from MJ. And would it be spring in Texas without photos of children amongst the blue bonnets? These come from Mitzi Van Sant. I hope to somehow have some pictures of Augie and Lulu in the blue bonnets to show next year. Our plant this week is Ligularia, sometimes called leopard plant. Although the yellow-orange flowers of this sunflower relative are pretty, Ligularia is more valued in the landscape for its foliar display. Large, dark green, heart-shaped leaves are tinged with purple, including the undersides, veins, and margins, giving this plant a truly striking appearance. Ligularia is a large, clumping perennial, getting about two feet wide and three feet tall. It does best in shady, wet conditions, so it's perfect if you have high clay soils and a dark, boggy area that stays too wet for most other plants. In fact, if you don't have an area full of shade where the soil stays wet most of the time, it will be best to avoid this plant because it will not survive in a dry, sunny spot in our extreme heat here in the Deep South. As with most perennials, shear it back to in late winter to reinvigorate for new growth. For timely garden tasks and monthly to-do lists, and to send us your questions and pictures from your garden, please check out our newly designed website at klru.org ctg. We'd love to hear from you.